Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. What if I told you that intelligent agents don't need GPT to be smart? So welcome to a demo where everything is ruled by the logic, memory is modular and orchestration is crystal clear. So today we are going to dive into Microsoft Agent Framework, which is a very powerful SDK that lets you build multi-agent workflows with zero hallucination and full traceability. So we don't need embeddings, we don't need prompt engineering, we, we will just write plain clean Python code which can do smart routing and the agents which actually know what they are doing. So whether you are building an enterprise co-pilot or debugging distributed workflows, this particular framework gives you the tools to scale, observe and deploy without LLM overhead. So let's unpack how it works, what problems it solves, and why it might just be the most underrated AI toolkit you haven't explored yet. So let's get started. So first of all, let's understand what is this Microsoft Agent Framework. So it is a unified SDK which was uh, in picture since last two, three weeks, and it is very well suited for building intelligent and modular AI agents. So it's not only about AI agents, you can build in fact, lot many different kind of workflows using this particular agent. And it is the combination of the semantic kernel and autogen. So it gets the best features among both of these. And then this is the framework we have it here. So if you're new to autogen, so autogen lets you define multiple agents wherein each agent is having specific roles. And then this particular framework like autogen, it will orchestrate all of those agents together so that they can work in a very seamless fashion. And coming to the semantic kernel, if you are not sure what the semantic kernel is, I have an entire, I have one full playlist in which I have explained every single thing about the semantic kernel, what it is, how to get started, what are the plugins, how to plug memory to it, how can we make a call to AP, external APS. So all these things are already present in my playlist. So just go through it and you will understand what the semantic kernel is. But in a nutshell, I can say that Microsoft Agent Framework is semantic kernel plus autogen. So it had, had to have the both the features from these two th um, frameworks. And best part is it supports Python and as well as the .NET. So you can go with any of these languages. And next point it is saying is it's this particular framework is not only for experimentation purposes, but you can also go ahead and create your enterprise grade orchestration. So it is good for any kind of applications you are thinking. Then it can be host, it is hosted on GitHub and it is very well integrated with AI foundries, which means that you can use lot many other services which are hosted on Azure if you are building a solution which is very much relying on Azure services. So in that case, this framework could be the best fit. Let's uh, talk a little bit more about it. So first I will go through a little bit of theoretical aspect and then I will show you the demo how we can make agents talk to each other. So first see what all problems it can solve. So if you can think of a scenario wherein how you're building your agent based applications till date. So let's say you have a memory to plug, you have different kinds of tools which you want to inject to your systems or you are making some API calls, you are having some cache management systems. So basically you are having lot many things and when you are making a system which is integrated with all of these then at some point you will feel that it becomes messy. So in order to get rid of that, this particular framework is here. So what it does is here, everything is very clear. It's clean, everything is modularized. So if you want to plug in all these dependencies or all these different, different tools or the services together, then this particular framework can help you with that. <clears throat> so here you can see on the left-hand side I've written, it enables multi-agent collaboration, it enables tooling, as a tool routing as well as observability because you will get a chance to uh, see the traces, logs, whatever your agents are generating. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is also, it also provides you memory aware reasoning because it is very easy to integrate it with your AI search, Redis or any other search you are thinking of. And the last point, it supports Azure native development because if you're using Azure AI Foundry, then definitely you can utilize this framework for your deployment purposes. Let's go ahead. So why we should use it when we have so many different systems already available in market? 
So the very first reason is it uh, promotes modularity. So let's say you have 10 different agents, they are doing 10 different things, then we can go with the single principle here, wherein one class will define one agent and that one agent will have the functions which are related to only that agent. We can have separate separate config files, separate classes which are related to just one particular agent. And then we can bring in all these agents together at one place wherein we will just plug in using two or three lines. So I will show you in a while how it can be done. It is very transparent because which agent is being called and what are the inputs to that agent everything is being traced and logged so you can definitely go ahead and check that out if you want then it is scalable because it can be very easily deployed on azure ai foundry and it supports observability so you have your all the matrices and the traces over there the fourth point here is we can use this particular framework microsoft agent framework with or without LLM. So it's not necessary that you have to use LLM or GPT powered models in order to get the benefits of this particular framework. So you can just write your own logic, plug it and you are good to go. Then it is very well compliant. So like I said, it is uh, SD, this is the SDK which is utilizing lot many Azure services so you can inject your Azure services including your key vault, Redis and other governance, to, governance tools which are already available on Azure. So injecting these systems is pretty straightforward with this particular agent. Now here is a simplified workflow uh, how you can make the system work. So what we are seeing here is a user is giving a query that convert 100 degree Fahrenheit to Celsius and explain me how it is done. So this is how we are doing. We have three different agents and then at the end we are having the final output query. So I will show you using the code in a while, but let's go through another slide, which is I think the last one. So why we are going with the no LLM approach? Why we are not, why we are not going for GPT based or any AI model based? The reason behind this is it's not necessary that every application you are building needs that. It's not necessary that only LLMs or GPT powered models can make your application intelligent. It could be your logic sometimes. So what you can do is you can just write your own logic, orchestrate it, and you are good to go. It could be any sort of workflows wherein you are calling one thing, then getting the output of the first tab, passing it on to the second one, or it can be like, Two different things are running in parallel and you are clubbing the output at one point. So these things can be very well executed. So on the right hand side is the same diagram which I'm going to show you in a while. But what I'm trying to say here in my example scenario, I will be having three agents, parser, converter and the explainer agent. So let's say user is giving a query that convert this particular Fahrenheit to Celsius and explain me how it is done. So in that case, first my query will go to parser agent. So parser agent will extract the content that what actually I'm asking, whether I'm asking Fahrenheit to Celsius, Celsius to Fahrenheit, and what is the value of, uh, or what is the number I'm going with. So this is the task of my parser agent. So parser agent will go ahead and extract these three values. Then it will give it to the converter agent. Now it's the job of the converter agent to convert into the respective way, whether it is Fahrenheit to Celsius or Celsius to Fahrenheit. This is the job of my converter agent. Now I have uh, the I have applied the formula or the converter agent has applied the formula and we are having some value for this conversion. So what this explainer agent will do is it will grab the output of the converter agent and will return in a nice formatted way which user can understand. So this is all what we are going to do today. And like I said, we are not using any GPT, no prompt engineering required, no embedding at all. It's just a clean, simple Python logic. So let's see how we can do that so in order to make the things simple i have written everything in single file but as a practice you need to come up with a single file for every agent so these are the packages i have imported so you need to go ahead and install the agent framework and it will give you all these different uh, classes of the functions so this is for uh, workflow builder because using this workflow builder we will be plugging our agents together then we will have something for the context so that the workflow will be aware that okay this is my input or this is the type of output i am giving then you have the output event so if you want to know which event was triggered or where are we whether my agent is sitting idle 
or what is the situation that you can get to know using this output event and the, finally we have the executor so every function which you want to uh, make as a part of workflow has to be decorated using uh, with this executor here so in my case like i said my first function is the parse text so what it is taking uh, is an input string which is user defined string convert 100 degrees celsius to fahrenheit so this is what i'm having in my input string then i have this uh, dict it means my output would be or uh, the next step for the or the input for my next step would be the dictionary which means in a simple words if i say i'm taking some string and i'm saying that i will be generating dictionary that would be used in my next step which is my converter so here you will see that i have not used any llm or any gpt powered model rather i'm writing my own python logic so what i'm doing here is i'm just extracting the values out of it i'm checking if my string contains fahrenheit or celsius degree f degree c accordingly i'm setting okay this is my from unit similarly i'm extracting to unit and then using this regex i am saying get me the number which user is asking so if you are asking that convert 100 degree centigrade to fahrenheit then it will have 100 in it so everything is good i am constructing a dictionary with these three values so whatever the long string you have given as an input i am having only these three values in my dictionary as a second step so this is the result i am going to pass it on to my converter now one thing to remember here is i'm making this function as async but you can also go ahead and make it a synchronous the only thing is you need to just return it from here rather than await similarly i'm having a converter which is taking dictionary and again it is out spitting a dictionary so that's why i'm having context as a dictionary if you want to know more about it you can just read it over here it is saying that enables executors to interact with workflows and other executors so executor is nothing but the functions which we want to pass it to our workflow now again this is my custom logic where i am actually where i am actually parsing it and then pushing it the converted value into this so now i have the parse string which i am sending it to my explain text and the most important thing here you will see is the input is dict but here i have changed this to never earlier it was just dict but this time it's never it means that you need not to pass this input to anywhere or next step of the workflow rather whatever you are spitting will be the final output that's why it is saying never now after all these simple python logic i'm constructing the final output which is just a simple string i will show you and here comes the plugin part so what we are using is workflow builder and here you can add the ages so how you want your first function would be parse text then you want to uh, parse text will send the output to convert text then in next step i am adding another age which is saying convert text would be my input and it will redirecting the output to the explain text and here make sure to set the very first function which you want to make a call to so in our case it is parse text and we are building it and that's all here i am just invoking the function so let me quickly execute and show you so i'm running this workflow and here you can see these are the various events which got triggered and here so this was my string convert 100 degree fahrenheit to celsius and explain how so what it has done is it has performed or ran all these steps in the workflow and then it is saying workflow completed with results so 100 degree fahrenheit is approximately 37.78 degree celsius and to convert fahrenheit to celsius subtract 32 and multiply by 5 by 9 so this is what the explanation is and at the end you can see that ex uh, that explain explainer executor also completed and now it is in idle state it means we are done this is the output which we are receiving so this is a very simple workflow i would like to show you because i want to show you that it's not necessary that every time you need llm to make an intelligent application sometimes it's just your simple python logic or any other language logic which can make the things more simpler and in this particular scenario if you will see we don't need any kind of intelligence so that's the reason i haven't used but if you're interested in knowing how we can inject llm to similar kind of workflows do let me know in comments and i can come up with a, another video in which i will just inject the llm or i can inject 
any of the memory to it so that you can have a good overview of what this particular framework can do. So that's all I have and do let me know in comments what are the different use cases you are thinking with respect to this particular framework. Thanks for watching.